Hey gamers, we're back with another episode of Let's Create a Competitive Card Game. In this episode, we'll be continuing with the cost-benefit analysis for the effects within the game. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so last episode, we started the cost-benefit analysis for the effects within the game. And what the cost-benefit analysis is, is for every effect we have or plan to have within the game, we will list that effect out and we will assign it a value, which will either be a benefit or a cost. Now, benefits are things which are good for the user and costs are the negative things for the user. So if a card effect has you discard a card to do something, then discarding a card would be a cost. So it would be a negative benefit as you're losing a card in your hand and the effect would be the positive benefit or the benefit. So all the cost benefit analysis does is it gives you an opportunity to balance your game when you're assigning effects to cards and cost as in the card cost. So yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into this. So before we hop over to Excel, I am going to hop over to the rulebook as I did add some more effects into the game. So what I did after last episode is I thought about the guilds within the game, so the power, life, and mind, and also the classes within those guilds. So we have the warrior, the cleric, and the magician. Now, I wanted to add some more effects or keywords into the game, as the way it was, we didn't have too many keywords, and the game was seeming maybe a little bit boring to me. Even though we haven't really got into playtesting and adding more effects, I did want to think ahead of time. So what I did off camera is I added some effects and I'll go over those now. So one of the first effects that I added is, or sorry, one of the first keywords I added is alert. And in case you guys don't remember, the keywords are just words that take up the place of all the text after them. So for instance, alert is the keyword, and all alert means is this card is not expanded when attacking. So what that means is in this game, you will have to turn your card or you will have to do something to your attackers so that the defender knows that you've already attacked. As cards can only attack once per turn unless they have an effect that says they can attack multiple turns. So in some games, it's called exhausting and others just called tapping. So for right now, I'm just going to call it expending, though that is subject to change. So the next keyword that I added is assault. So what this means is that this card can attack the turn it's played. So some games have what you call haste, they have swiftness, etc. So the idea in this game is that you play a card, you cannot attack right away. So they have what some games would call summoning seconds. Now, there are some games where you can attack the first turn you play a card, and I do think that makes the game move along um, fairly quick, but at least for playtesting, the way I'll test is that cards cannot attack the turn that they are playing. So now, Bounce and Fearless were already in the game, and Fearless was a keyword that I came up with for warriors as the whole idea of warriors is they get some amount of benefits when they are the only follower you have under your control. So now if we move down to the next one that was in here, so floating was already a keyword and next is immortal. So just to go over the ones that I did add, they are immortal, immunity, indomitable, invulnerability, manifest, perish, and resistance. So what a mortal is, is it just means this card cannot be destroyed. So any effects that would destroy a card cannot destroy an immortal card. And also a card that is immortal cannot be destroyed when it takes lethal damage. As a card that takes lethal damage is destroyed. 
Not like other card games, if you reduce a card's defense to zero, that card is not destroyed, it is just sent to the discard pile. So you can still remove this card from play, you can still bounce this card, etc. It just cannot be destroyed by a lethal damage or destroyed effects. And the next keyword that I added is immunity. And this just means that this card cannot be picked or targeted by and is unaffected by the effects of that which it is immune to. So immunity can be to a, you can have immunity to a class, you can have maybe even immunity to a card type. Like say maybe you're immune to relics, so relics cannot affect you or pick and or target you. So this is a pretty powerful ability and it may not be seen that often. Now after immunity is indomitable and that just means that this card's will can activate anytime the condition is met. So if you recall class cards have what you call a will and they order they auto activate when a certain condition is met. So the way in which this works is they act as an interrupt. So if effects are resolving, the will will automatically kick in and interrupt the, the uh, I don't want to say chain, but I'll use the word chain as a lot of people are, are probably familiar with games that use chains. So a will will interrupt the chain and the will will go off automatically. Now in this game, your will can only go off once. And I shouldn't say automatically. It, it will seem as though it happens automatically, but you still have to say that you are activating your will. Now, what this means is that there will be some class cards who wills can happen every single time the condition is met. So say, say there's a, a will that says when your life is reduced to less than 10, do X, Y, Z. So every time your life is reduced to less than 10, that will can kick off. Now I am going to have to um, figure out a good way to word this as just thinking about the will that I just said, the idea wouldn't be that say you're at five and you get attacked and you take one damage the idea wouldn't be that your will kicks off again the idea would be like if you're at five and you go back up to ten and you get reduced below ten and your will kicks off again though the prior may be good so as in every time you're below ten the will kicks in so yeah this is going to need some play testing and after this one is invulnerability and that just means that the card cannot be damaged so the card can still be destroyed it can be removed from play it can be bounced etc it's just that it cannot have damage inflicted to it so you can still assign damage and if you are defending then your opponent has to assign the damage to you However, you're not destroyed by lethal damage. Now, the next keyword I added is manifest. And this just means when this card enters play. So some cards like say clerics will have an effect when they enter play that you gain a certain amount of life. And the one right after manifest is perish, which is the opposite of entering the now. So when this card leaves the now or when this card leaves play, an effect uh, goes off. And then the last keyword I added is resistance. So this just means that this card cannot be picked or targeted by the effects of that which it is resistant to. So resistance is like the first step to immunity. So immunity overall is better as immunity also means that you're unaffected by the effects. So the difference being cards that pick and target you, they won't work for either, but if you think in terms of, let's say Yu-Gi-Oh, if, if your opponent plays a Raigeki or a Dark Hole, now those do not target. 
So if you had resistance to say spell cards, then if someone played a Regeki, since Regeki doesn't target or hit, then this card in this game would still be affected by that effect, whereas Amenity says that you're unaffected by that effect. So yeah, so these are the keywords that I added to the game. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hop over to Excel. All right, so we're in Excel. Now, what I did is I went ahead and added some more effects. So the keywords that we just went over, I did add those here and I assigned them either a cost or benefit. And I also went ahead and put in some more effects, which may not be keywords, but maybe on a lot of different cards. So things like deck search. Now searching your deck may not be a keyword and any type of card may let you search the deck. So I went ahead and added the benefit of three. And so also what I did is I went ahead and bolded the ones that we went over last episode. So that way I can quickly see the ones that I just added and kind of go over those. So the first one we have here is salt. So that is a, a basic plus one benefit. So plus one will be the standard for something that is just a, uh, I guess I don't want to say general, but is not too powerful or specific to a, a class. So next we have effects which may do burn or may do direct damage. So what I did for this, and you'll see this a few times here, is that what this means is if it's less than or equal to three, then it is a solid one. But for every every number greater than three, it adds plus one. So for instance, if a card burns your opponent for five damage, then the benefit there is three. As the three, three of those points would be one benefit, and then each point after three would be plus one so three plus two is five therefore it's one plus two so the benefit is three now the next effect is effects which prevent a card from blocking now some cards and it's only two here but some other effects may also have both a benefit and a cost so if you're preventing your opponent from blocking then that is obviously a benefit for you now if a card that you play has some effect but prevents you from blocking, then it is a cost for you. So the easy way to think about this is anything that is negative to the user will always be a cost. Now, something like deck searching can never really be a negative for the, for the user. As you are searching your deck, you do get a chance to shuffle it. So, yeah, it's not really a negative unless someone's trying to cheat and stacking their deck, which is not, uh, what's the word? It's not allowed in, in this game or any game. So yeah, there will not be too many uh, cards which allow you to search your deck for a card, but I can see myself adding some effects. So we'll say that this is a plus three benefit. The searching your deck for a card and adding it to your hand is a really huge benefit. So the next effect that I that I went ahead and added is discard and that is kind of the same as block. So anything that makes your opponent discard is a plus one for you and the effect where you have to discard to use that effect is a minus one or a cost for you. So next we have effects which make you gain attack and defense. And those are just like burn effects. So three will be the threshold where anything less than or equal to three is only ever with one benefit. So if something gives you plus one to a attack or defense or something, then that is still one. This is, it would be the same as if a card gave you plus three. It would still be considered a one benefit. So yeah, anything less than or equal to three is a one benefit and anything greater than three is a plus one benefit. So that is the same for attack, defense, and also life gain. Now, immortal immunity and vulnerability, I did not add the benefits here. You'll see a few which are blank as 
I do want to keep some of this information secret. I don't really want to give out all of the information on this game. So yeah, these numbers will be kept secret. And in a future episode, I will go over how card costs are assigned and you will probably be able to figure out how the cards or what their inherent cost is and then from that you'll be able to deduce the plus or minus for some of these effects which are minor. Now I also added a mass effect so anything that say destroys all cards in the field that is considered a mass effect and I'm holding that ring off on the benefit and also for semi mass I'm holding that off and for resistance I am also holding that off. So yeah this series is all about teaching you how to make a competitive card game while also this game is a game that I do intend to release. So with that in mind I yeah I do need to hold some stuff back. Alright so that will be all for this episode. In the next episode, I think what I'll do is we'll start doing the cost benefit analysis for card cost. So what that is, is we'll go over how cards will be costed and I'll use a game probably like hmm, Versus System or uh, MTG. Um, I'll use those as an example and break down how their cards, how you can calculate if a card is good or not based on its cost. And from there, I'll branch over to deciding how the inherent values of my cards will be costed. So, yeah, if you enjoy these episodes, please be sure to like, subscribe, and all of that other good stuff. Thanks.